What's up, Tiger fans? It's Morgan here with The Morgan Thomas Show. Back again, another five-minute video about your Clemson Tigers. And today, I wanted to discuss Cade Klubnik versus Tennessee. I think this is a big subject going into the game on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to seeing Cade Klubnik come back out on the field. Now that DJ has officially transferred out and is going to Oregon State, Cade is the true starter for Clemson going into this game. But it is going to be a different game because it's not going to be the Tennessee of the regular season or the early season and the Clemson of the early season because Clemson is missing two guys from the defense. Uh, Tennessee has a bunch of injuries on defense. Tennessee has a bunch of guys on offense that aren't going to be there or are going to be opting out. And Clemson obviously doesn't have DJU anymore. So it's going to be a big difference, uh, you know, not what you would expect from, from earlier on in the season. But I think it'll still be interesting. And one of the key storylines there is, of course, Cade Klubnik, not just for Clemson fans, but also for Tennessee fans as well. They're looking to see what their defense can do, if they can stop them, if the Tennessee offense can hang with Clemson's uh, offense under Cade Klubnik. And, and on the flip side, if Cade Klubnik can continue his success uh, that he had versus the Tar Heels in the ACC championship game, um, obviously, again, it's going to be a completely different game than what you might have expected in the, in the regular season teams uh, that they were able to field out there. But let's take a look at what the defensive coordinator for Tennessee had to say about Cade Klubnik recently. And he comes out and he quotes, he says, uh, one of his quotes is, he's really talented. He has a strong arm, strong release. He's played some reps, obviously not the lion's share. Speaking of DJ Uyunglele, we went back and watched his high school film, Tremendous Athlete with a Strong Arm. Very interesting here to see. He's he's obviously acknowledging the talent of Cade Klubnik, talking about his arm strength. I feel like when I look back at Cade, I think about that, Big pass to Cole Turner. He likes to test the defense. He likes to take that risk in times. He likes to keep them all moving, whether it's through his feet, feet or with his big arm. And he does have a big arm. I mean, that pass was 47 yards on at the catch. And I was there. I was in the press box. That ball was way up there, probably even eye level to me. It felt like eye level to me. So not only can he throw it far, but he can also put some height on it as well. So I think Cade Klubnik has a uh, deceptively strong arm for such a young guy. Obviously, there's not a lot of film on Cade Klubnik. So the, the opposing defenses are going to have to go to the high school film to see what he's all about, which is a good thing for Clemson and Cade because you know, um, not having film leaves some unknown there about him. Again, this is Tim Banks, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee. He goes on to say that he can see why he's there. He, I can see why those guys are so high on him. We're going to have our hands full, but we've obviously played a ton of talented quarterbacks within this league. He's just the next guy up. So again, more acknowledgement of the talent for Cade Klubnik, but then some appreciation of his own team, which you would expect from a defensive coordinator or a head coach to say, hey, this opponent's really good, but I believe in my guys. I wanted to touch on that as well. Obviously, I think Cade Klubnik has the arm strength. He just needs to make sure that he can continue to move the ball, keep Clemson out of going into that three and out snowball that they can get into and keep Clemson away from turning the ball over. Even in the North Carolina game, Cade fumbled the ball one time and Cade threw a ball to the outside. That was nearly a pick six. If you remember it correctly, if I remember it correctly. So um, he he has tendencies there to high risk, high reward type plays. So I think it'll be key to continue to protect the ball and keep moving the ball for sure. He said that they were going to have their hands full. I think it goes back to just being a running quarterback, having that true RPO uh, attack. You know, there were many times where DJ, you just knew he wasn't going to run the ball. He could be faking it. Um, and he usually when he did run it, he had success, but there were plenty of times where you knew he was just going to give it to, to Will Shipley, whether it was going to be good or bad. But one of the comments he mentioned is, uh, having played a bunch of talented QBs in the SEC. I think this was an interesting quote because 
Who did they actually play? Well, the best quarterback in the SEC, according to Yards, is Will Rogers. And they didn't play Will Rogers in Mississippi State, so scratch him off the list. Well, they did play Stetson Bennett, and they lost to Stetson Bennett. Now, obviously, Georgia is a is a really good team in the playoffs for sure. So you can't knock that for sure. But and it was in Georgia, but he had 257 yards, Stetson Bennett, and two touchdowns, and actually outperformed Hendon Hooker in that game. Now Bryce Young, when they played them, uh, it was in Tennessee, and Bryce Young had 455 yards passing and two touchdowns, and actually had a better stat line than. Uh, Hendon Hooker in that game, even though they lost. So you could really chalk that loss up to Nick Saban and his bad play calling there. But, you know, whatever, bad, bad decision making in the end of the game, but whatever. Um, so of the top three, they played two, and the two guys that they played actually statistically outperformed Hendon Hooker. Well, let's continue to look at it. So Spencer Rattler, they played South Carolina. Um, they lost that game. They got blown out. Hendon Hooker got injured for the rest of the season. Spencer Rattler went 30 for 37 and 438 yards with six total touchdowns. So, so far, I've, I've told you about the top four. Let's go into the fifth player. Jaden Daniels was 32 for 45 with 300 yards and one touchdown and one interception. Again, a better stat line than Hendon Hooker, even though they didn't win. So it's kind of a mixed bag there on wins or losses. They didn't beat Georgia, they didn't beat South Carolina, but they did turn around and beat Bryce Young and LSU and um, and Alabama, uh, but they didn't play Mississippi State. So of the top five uh, quarterbacks, you know, minus Hinn and Hooker because he would be up there, it's a mixed bag with wins or losses. But one thing that's not a mixed bag is that the opposing quarterback outperformed that quarterback for Tennessee, which happened to be Hendon Hooker. Um, it won't be the same quarterback. Obviously, Milton will be playing in this game. But I think, you know, there's a tendency there that I like as a Clemson fan. You have to say, hey, these quarterbacks are doing well against that Tennessee defense. Now, now Tim has um, Tim Banks has has really tried to implement an aggressive style of defense. They're going to keep trying to push at you. Again, it's kind of the similar feeling that you get from Cade Klubnik as a quarterback. It's that high risk, high reward reward type system. Unfortunately for Tennessee, with the injuries and with the teams they've played in the past in the regular season, that you know risk has been too high, and they and they've actually given up more yards. Um, you know, and really been beat up, you know, especially later on in the season. So we'll see what Tennessee can bring to the table. Again, it's going to be an interesting matchup because it's going to be two completely different teams than what we thought in the regular season. You got Joe Milton, Ramel Keaton, Brew McCoy, Squirrel White. Got to love that name, Squirrel White. Another guy I think that, um, you have to really uh, keep a lookout for is really there are two guys at running back, which is Jabari Small and Jalen Wright. Whenever Hendon Hooker seemed to have struggle to get things going in the air, they would go to Jabari Small and he would just light you up, especially in that high tempo offense and those quick hands off handoff to him. He could really chew up some yards when they couldn't get it in the passing game. So Tennessee definitely still has a lot of weapons on offense. They're going to try to beat you multiple ways and try to speed things out, try to stretch, try to stretch you out. But again, it can't be ignored that they have the 86th ranked defense uh, and obviously have some injuries there as well. So we will see without Jalen Hyatt um, and without Cedric Tillman. So those big time guys not going to be out, be out there. Hendon Hooker not going to be there. DJU not going to be there on the Clemson side. Miles Murphy and Trenton Simpson not going to be there. So Obviously, a different kind of game, but I think it'll be an exciting one uh, nonetheless. I look forward to seeing what Cade Klubnik can do. Hey, let me know what you think about Cade Klubnik and Tennessee. This is kind of the early week thoughts going into the Orange Bowl this weekend on Friday night. Let me know in the comments. Hey, am I completely off base? Am I crazy? Did I miss anything? Let me know. And uh, don't forget to like this video if you like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, so you can stay up to date on all of my exclusive Clemson content I put out every single week.